going to now explore how do we get input from the user through the terminal. Okay. So we will work our way up to doing graphical user interfaces in Java. That's like a second semester topic. For now, we're going to do like the user type stuff into the terminal. We read it, we print stuff out to the terminal. So we're doing like terminal based interfaces to our programs. But we've never, we haven't done any type of input before. So basically today we're going to focus on what is the class in Java, which is like the input function in Python. Okay? So that's where, where we're headed. Because in chapter four here, we have a lot of kind of smaller unrelated topics. What we've done to make this more cohesive and hopefully more interesting and engaging is we have two classes here in our BlueJ project that we're going to be working on um, called Caesar Cipher and Caesar Cipher Demo. Caesar Cipher um, is an, an, a, an encryption function. Okay? So it's named after Julius Caesar and the, like the Roman Empire um, because they would take a, a secret message and they would encrypt it using what's called the Caesar cipher and they'd send it to the troops on the front lines and they could decrypt it there to get their commands but if it was intercepted along the road it didn't matter because it was encrypted no one could read it um, so we're going to write a class and some code that actually does the Caesar cipher just just for fun just to be clear, you should not put any of your important information in the Caesar cipher, okay? It worked great in ancient Rome, perhaps. Um, it would take a fraction of a second for a computer to break any Caesar cipher. This is not secure. Um, but it's a cool example, so we're gonna do it for that. Just don't put like your, I don't know, social security number and credit card information in it or anything. All right, um, we're gonna start in the Caesar cipher demo class here. So let's open that up. Um, the demo class is where we're going to eventually create a new Caesar cipher object to do the encryption. But to start with, we're going to just prompt the user for information like what is the secret message that you want to encrypt and things like that. Um, we're going to do that. So let's, we're going to do that by using a new class called a scanner. So let's create a local variable of type scanner. I'm going to name my local variable s and I'm going to assign it the reference return from saying new scanner. The scanner, a scanner object can basically read characters from a variety of different streams, different places. Um, we want to read from the terminal, so we're going to specify system.in as the single argument to the scanner constructor. So I want a new scanner that reads from system.in. System.in means read from the terminal, like where the user is typing on the keyboard. Okay. All right, this is a brand new class and it comes with a lot of terminology. So let's capture some of that here in our comments. So a scanner object, like what does this thing do? A scanner object parses, that's a new word, parses primitive types, boolean, int, double, and strings. So strings aren't a primitive type, but it can handle strings as well. So it parses these things from a stream. So parses is a new word, stream is a new word. So let's define each of those. A stream is a sequence of characters from a file, string, terminal, network connection, all sorts of whatever we want. We use the word stream because we're making the analogy to like a stream of water, right? So imagine a stream of water, it's like flowing by. Um, you can keep seeing things in the stream as it goes by. Um, our sequence of characters, think of it as like a stream of characters. And so that stream of characters might be coming from a file might be coming from another string in your program. In our case, it's going to come from what the user is typing in the terminal. It could also be over a network. Okay. So that's what we mean by stream. Parsing. So this idea of when I say it parses primitive types, what we mean by parsing in computer science is 
really the equivalent of what we do when we're reading like a novel, we parse sequences of characters into words, right? Um, computer, our, our programming languages do the same thing. So parsing is separating a sequence of characters, characters into what we call tokens. So we'll define tokens in a second based on, based on what we call delimiters. So I keep introducing new technology here for us. So now we need to define token and delimiter. A token is a meaningful sequence of characters. Think of it like a word. In fact, usually we want tokens to be words. We want to read like one word at a time from the stream of characters. Okay? So we use the word token instead of word because it's a little bit more general and doesn't have to be a word. Um, that's, that's more of like something we do in software engineering than, than here. Let's define delimiters. Delimiters are characters that separate tokens. By default, white space, what I mean by white space is a space character, a tab character, a new line character. is our default delimiters, which kind of works out well. By default, spaces, tabs, new lines, those are the things that separate words. And so our tokens by default are going to be just words, and the delimiters by default are just the spaces that separate the words. It works out great. There are cases we want when we want the scanner to behave differently, and we can adjust all of this, but we're not going to worry about that in this unit. Okay, We're just going to stick with this. Last note I want to make here is when we create a scanner object, we have to specify the input stream. We can't just say new scanner because um, the scanner doesn't know from where to read the characters. So we have to specify the input stream. For example, system.in, which is the terminal input. For now, like in this unit, we're just going to always say new scanner system.in because we always want to read from the terminal. So we're going to keep it simple for now. So scanners, we're going to use scanner objects to read from a string, stream of characters. It will break that stream of characters into tokens, which are in general words. Um, and those tokens are separated by what we call delimiters, which in general is just white space. So. Cool. When we are designing a, um, a terminal-based interface for our program, like we're doing here, we're going to prompt the user to type something in the terminal. Um, we want to make sure that we follow some best practices. Um, while in general, graphical user interfaces are more user friendly, we want our terminal interface to be as friendly as possible. So here are three best practices. These aren't unique to Java. You might be familiar with these from other programming classes. Um, so here's some best practices. And then we're going to actually do these when we prompt the user. So number one, the most important thing is to actually print something to the terminal that tells the user what you want them to type. Um, there's nothing more confusing than running a program and having it sit there and wait for you to do something and you don't know what to do. So number one, prompt the user for what you want them to input. Most important. The second one, these next two don't matter as much in BlueJay, but most people don't run 
programs in Blue Jay, so they matter a lot for everywhere else, so that's why we still focus on them. We want to use the print method, not the println method. And the reason for that is we do this so that the cursor is at the end of the prompt and not on a new line. Visually, it looks better if it's like, here's the prompt, like enter the text to encrypt, and the cursor is right there at the end of that line, and that's where you type your text. It's not somewhere else. But visually, we need a little bit of separation between what we print to the terminal and what the user types. So the third best practice is to leave a space after the prompt. So here is what that actually looks like. System.out.println, println, enter the text to encrypt. So that tells them what we want. Oh, not println. Oh my gosh. I didn't follow rule number two. System.out.print, enter the text to encrypt. And there is a space between the colon and the double quote right here that I highlighted in blue. This follows all three best practices. What do we want the user to do? We want them to type in the text that we're going to encrypt. We use print, so their input will be right at the end of this line, and we have a space so it won't be jarred right up against the colon. This is all good stuff. Now we're to the exciting point of that we could actually read from the terminal. So how do we do that using our new scanner object? There are several methods on the scanner object. We're going to focus on three or four of them, and probably just a couple today. Let's do the first one today. The first method we're going to focus on is the next line method. So the next line method returns all characters up to the end of the line. And what I mean by the end of the line is where the user typed enter, like where they hit the enter key to send their input in. While a scanner usually parses, well, one word at a time, often we want to read like an entire sequence of words at once. And this is a good example. We want them to type in the text to encrypt. It's going to be a sentence or maybe a whole paragraph. It's going to be a whole bunch of words. You don't want to read them one at a time. We want to read all the words at once and have them in a single string. So we're going to use the next line method. Here's what it looks like. We need to create a local variable of type string. I'm going to call it text. And we assign it the reference to the string returned by calling the next line method on the scanner object. So the next line method takes all of the characters up to where the user hit enter, makes a new string initialized to all of those characters, and returns a reference to that new string. That's how we read it in. For our encryption algorithm, we're only going to deal with uppercase letters. It makes the math, it makes the encryption a little bit easier. So let's convert this to all uppercase. So last unit, we learned about the two uppercase method. We can call on a string. The two uppercase method makes a new string where all the characters are uppercase and returns a reference to that. So we have to call two uppercase and assign it back to our variable text. The way that the Caesar cipher works is we need to um, ask for the message we want to input. We just did that. And we need to ask the user for what's called the key phrase. The key phrase is used to actually perform the encryption. And then the same key phrase is needed later to perform the decryption to get back the original message. So we have to ask the user for that. So let's prompt them again. System.out.print. Enter the key phrase. And our key phrase should have no spaces, just a word. 
It's kind of like a password. In this case, we don't want to read multiple words. We want to read just one word. Even if the user types in multiple words, we just want the single word as the key phrase. So we're going to use the next method. The next method returns the next token in the stream as a string. Perfect. So we'll create a local variable called key phrase. And we'll say s dot next. Next re reads the next token, the next word, creates a new string with that word as its value, and returns a reference to it. And let's make this all uppercase too. So what we've learned so far is how to create a new scanner object that reads from the terminal, how to prompt the user in a way that makes it easier for them to understand what we want, how to read a whole series of words, a whole series of characters, all the way up to where the user hit enter, or how to read just a single word. We will also learn how to read like an integer value um, as well, but we're going to do that next time. This is a good place to pause.